I'm a former visa officer and your C1D interview is very important. Because it's going to allow you to have a job that takes you in and out of port in the US. This could be a seaport, this could be an airport. Uh, anyone whose crew that's coming in on a vessel, either a plane or a ship into the US for work purposes is going to need a C1D visa. It's also used for transit, but we're not gonna talk about the transit case today because people that are just transiting through the US, let's say that you're going from Argentina to London and you wanna transfer through uh, Miami, you should just get a B1B2 visa. That's a much better path than trying to apply for a C1D visa for transit to come through the US. So we're talking about crew, people who have employment and that's why they're applying for a C1D visa. Now, what are the key points that you should be aware of when you're applying for the C1D? Well, it really is based on your employment. Now, you're not technically employed in the United States, you're employed outside of the United States and your work is taking you into the US uh, where you'll be there for a couple of nights, an indeterminate amount of time while you're waiting to then leave the US again on the same vessel or a different vessel. One of the key things here is your employer. Having the support, the full support and documentary support from your employer is going to be a big thing because if you have a reputable employer, that's gonna be a big step towards getting the visa issued. If the visa officer recognizes the name of the airline or the cruise line or the shipping company, that's gonna help you get your visa issued. Now, the second thing is going to be you as an applicant, right? So we have two parts to this. We have the job, which is going to be related to the employer. Sometimes these employers might be hiring you through a third party staffing contractor, in which case you wanna make sure that those documents are explicit in talking about what is this name brand airline cruise line shipping company that you're actually working for not just the name of the staffing company anytime that you can name drop it's going to help you all right so that's the first piece of evidence you need to focus on is who's the employer what's this job how legit is it okay the more legit it is and that could be any top world airline cruise line that anybody has seen advertisements for on on television anything like this is going to be brand name that's going to get you a lot of clout at the interview if it's something that doesn't have a lot of name recognition you need to recognize that and recognize that when you drop this name it's not going to resound with the visa officer you're going to need to provide more information to explain what this actually is oh your crew on a private yacht okay well they will never have heard of this this private yacht that you're on so you need to explain what this is how did you get this job what is this private yacht what's the operation like so that they feel comfortable since they're used to seeing these kind of name brand employments. The second thing is talking about yourself, talking about your credentials to work on the ship. Now, many times, uh, there are people who are skilled in one field or another who are hired for jobs on these vessels. If you're air crew, then you have that type of training to be a flight attendant. Uh, maybe you're a pilot. Maybe you're a crew on a ship that's a, a cargo transportation ship, something like that. If you're on a cruise ship, maybe you have training in hospitality, something like this. Maybe you're a lifeguard. There are a lot of people who have a discrete skill set and they were hired to do this particular job, right? Even some people that I've met who uh, have worked in retail and then they're going to be working in a retail shop on a cruise line. This is a good example. You've got the relevant experience to do this job. Now there sometimes are people who are hired with very little experience. And so what you're relying on is basically the visa officer having uh, the confidence that you are acting in good faith, right? If you don't have very much relevant experience and the job doesn't even demand it, and you're working for a company that doesn't have a lot of name brand recognition, well then this is all just following on you personally, being able to convince the officer of your good intentions. Okay. Like any other visa application that is subject to 214B, we've talked about this in a lot of videos, you can go check them out to find out more about that refusal code, but any other application for a visa that's subject to 214B is going to have an effect on this too. The C1D visa is subject to 214B, so is a tourist visa, so is a student visa, so is an exchange visa, all of these are subject to 214B. If you've ever received one of these in the past, that's a plus gonna help you. If you've received one of these and then traveled to the US for a short period of time and then left on a tourist visa, that helps you even more. If you completed your studies in the US and then you departed and went back home, helps you even more. If you went to the US as a tourist and then you stayed for four months, that's gonna hurt you a little bit. What was going on, especially people who are of working age, staying in the US for four months seems a little bit excessive in the eyes of the visa officers. And they'll think that perhaps you were in the US doing unauthorized work. You need to know this beforehand and know that you'll need to defend against that and be able to prove 
with evidence what it was you were doing. Now, many people do take gap years, right? Travel around the world. Many Americans will do it, right? Maybe they spent three months in Thailand. They weren't working. They were on vacation. How could they prove that? Well, it's hard to prove what you didn't do, right? It's very hard to prove, oh, I didn't do this and here's the evidence. What you can prove though is what you did do and if doing this other thing precludes you being able to, to do that forbidden thing, then you're halfway on your way to convincing them that you didn't do anything that was unauthorized. So if you were on the, in the US for a long time for vacation, what can you show that you did do that would be evidence that proves you weren't working? Well, what would work look like? Staying in one place, earning a paycheck, right? Well, what if you went around to multiple places? What if over those three or four months, you were in seven or eight different places? That's a good piece of evidence. What if you got pictures of all of this? Doing tourist things, you're on the beach, you're in the mountains, you're at Disney World, right? You're seeing sights. All of these things look great because those are the kinds of things that tourists do. Spending money that you brought from home, that's a thing that tourists do, not spending money that you're earning in the US. There are a lot of things that you can do in order to prove that what you were doing wasn't something that was against the regulations. The whole point of this is to say that anything from your past, your past visa issuances, your past visa rejections, your past travel to the US, it's all going to have an effect on that C1D interview, right? It's You don't get a fresh start because you've applied for a C1D and you're going in now, they should forget everything about those previous applications or that trip you took to the US five years ago. No, it all is going to be considered in one interview, okay? So remember when you go in there, they're looking at the job and they're looking at you personally. These two aspects are what you need to focus on in order to get your visa issued.